Welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. This season is all about comfort. With many French comfort recipes made in my own home kitchen, inspired by what I find in my garden, and kept company by my two furry companions, Join me as I share seasonal fare to elevate the everyday meal. And most importantly, discover how to enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Let's get started. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Shannon Naples, and this is a Simply Luxurious Kitchen. Today we're going to make hamburgers, but not just any hamburgers. We're going to make brioche bun hamburgers with a tomato and onion relish that will just knock your socks off if you're tired of the same old onion and tomato sliding and slipping, <laughs> sliding and slipping off of your burger. We're going to put cheese on it, but you don't have to put cheese on it if you don't want to. And we're going to make something a little different than just your standard mustard and mayo sla uh, sauce that you put on the bun. We're going to use parsley, we're going to use butter, garlic, and shallots, and that's going to be in place of the mayo and the mustard. This is a good burger, it's very simple to make, and it has oodles of flavor. Let's get started. Okay, so I want to make, I've turned on the oven to uh, broiling because I'm going to be broiling my brioche buns now you can make your own brioche buns they're really easy to make they just take a lot of time you actually have to start them the day before and then you have to let them uh, rise a couple times it's a very simple recipe though full of butter full of eggs so good but you can also buy them at your local bakery which is what I did I love a good hamburger <laughs> I love hamburgers and I, at the end of a long day, especially if it's been a busy full week and I'm just not in the mood to cook, um, I will find myself going to one of my favorite restaurants, um, picking up one of their favorite hamburgers and pairing it with vegetables that I've roasted here at home, which are easy to do. Um, but I also love to make a good hamburger and there's something comforting about hamburgers. There is the bun, as we're gonna make with a brioche bun that's buttery and lovely and yummy, a little bit of crispy too, because we've toasted it. But then there's that burger. And when you dress it well, and you cook the burger right for your particular taste, it just melts in your mouth. Pairing it with a lovely glass of red wine, it doesn't really get much better. How do I replicate the fries? As I'll share with you um, in the show notes, a link to another recipe. I always like to make sure I have vegetables with my hamburger. So either it's roasted vegetables or it's arugula salad with, with, with baked sweet potato um, mixed in with the arugula and the dressing. And I love sweet potato fries. They're simple to make, stick them in the oven. Um, roast them with salt and pepper and olive oil and there you go but there really is a lovely um, elevation of of the hamburger when you make it at home you make it the way you love it and you add the special touches we're going to make and add to today's recipe let's get into the kitchen <laughs> using a food processor you want eight tablespoons of butter Get some of this out of the way for now. La, la, la. The good stuff. So, eight tablespoons of butter. 
unsalted butter. Okay, you want about a cup of fresh parsley. So I just went out to the garden and picked the fresh parsley up. And again, rough cut, rough, uh, roughly a cup. Um, so everything is just general. Get rid of the stems and then put them in here. You want a full shallot about medium size. Again, everything you're putting in here, just rough chop it. It doesn't have to be finely chopped. Don't waste your time doing that. That's what the food processor is for. So I'm just doing a rough chop of one shallot. And then I want two garlic cloves. So just get them out there, skin there. We're gonna do it a rough chop for that as well. Oscar says hamburgers, I'm there, aren't you buddy? Yeah. Okay. Salt and pepper. About a half a teaspoon. And that's all you have to do. Pulse. So as you can see, it's gonna be a green, soft, but also flavorful with that shallot and that garlic in there. So we're just gonna set this aside. It doesn't have to be in the refrigerator if you're doing this all together. Um, it's okay if it's room temperature, it'll spread a lot nicer, but when you're done, you're gonna probably have extra. So go ahead and put it in the refrigerator and use it the next time you make hamburgers. Um, it's a great, simple a change of flavor, I guess you could say, for a typical hamburger. So now that the spread for the buns is done, we're gonna make the relish, which will be the substitute for the onions and the tomatoes. Now we're, we're gonna do that over in the stove, but I'm gonna chop up what we need here. So we need one red onion. Now, if you don't have a red onion and you just have a regular yellow onion or a sweet onion, um, use that, that's fine. But what is nice about this, it does add a lovely color to the relish. Um, that really makes the whole dish look even more appetizing than it already is. So I'm gonna chop up one red onion and also one tomato. Now these are from my garden. I just went out and picked those. We have a few more days before the last, fr the last freeze. And so um, two small tomatoes would be perfect. Um, but basically one to one, one onion, one tomato. Chop them up. Um, they can be in just rough dices. They don't have to be fine or anything. Um, and then we'll get them ready and we'll make the relish. So very rough chop. These are both ready to go. You're gonna need a tablespoon of sugar and balsamic vinegar, and that's all you need to make this relish. Let's get started. You just need 10 inch pan. Turn it on medium heat. So we've got medium heat going here. Pull it about a tablespoon of olive oil. And we're gonna do the onions first. Starting to sizzle. You just want them to become tenderized because they need to cook longer than the tomatoes will need to cook. While that's cooking, you can actually prepare your hamburger buns. So that's what I'm going to do. Go ahead. Go ahead and get a small or medium mixing bowl. Put your hamburger in there. And I like a lot of fat in my hamburger. I have about 22% fat in here. Um, and it just, again, it gives it lots of flavor. That's what I want. This is going to be great flavor too, but again, layering all of that goodness. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna season the meat. Okay. Salt and pepper. Very simple. Now you don't have to do um, beef. You could do a mixture of lamb. You could do turkey. It's really up to you. I've done lamb before with it. It really makes it nice and tender. And don't mix it up too much. You want. You don't want it to get tough. So just enough to the salt and pepper mix in. And divide it up however many you need all right so i'm put a little bit more meat in this i i i purchased about a pound of meat maybe a little less than a pound and so i make about a third of a burger um, a third of a pound of a burger and not a quarter pounder but a third of a pound and i like to make it a little denter a little bit leaner or, or dented in here at the middle soften my edges don't play with it too much and it's there ready to go. 
So as you can see, pretty big burgers. But again, this is a comfort and it's nothing excessive. It's just gonna be so good. Okay. All right. If I have any little tiny residuals, I can make little hamburgers for the dogs. Good. It's been about four minutes. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of sugar, a tablespoon of sugar. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of balsamic. And now the tomatoes. Oh. Yum. And this will only take about four minutes on medium heat. The tomatoes are gonna cool it down for a second and then it's gonna heat right back up and they're gonna blend together and you're gonna see this come together and look like a relish. But that little bit of sugar, a little bit of balsamic, that's gonna bring a little bit of sweetness with that whew, sharp, ar sharp aromatic onion that you have. Um, Cause that red onion can be sharp. Then that tomato is what you always want. I love tomatoes on my burgers. We'll give it a couple more minutes. And we're gonna take that out of the pan and we're gonna cook the hamburgers while we, while we broil the buns. And then we're basically done. All right, so the relish is done. I'm gonna take this off the burner. I'm gonna set this aside on another plate and then I'm gonna start cooking the hamburgers. All right, so the relish is done. Now, hamburgers. So medium heat, olive oil, We are gonna put cheese on them, but we'll do that on the second side. All right. So while that is cooking on the first side, what I can do is prepare the buns, which I already have. I've sliced my brioche buns in half. I'm gonna put a little olive oil on them. So they brown up nicely. Rub it in so it's everywhere on that bun. And I'm also gonna slice my cheese. So that's not gonna go in yet because this will take maybe two to three minutes. That's it, and you put it in the broiler and it's done. So we're gonna wait. So we want it to be nice and warm when the burgers are done so we can put it all together and it just kind of melts together. I have sliced the cheese. It is cheddar cheese, but choose whichever cheese you'd like. Or no cheese at all. This really doesn't need cheese. It has a lot of flavor anyway. Um, what else you can do while you're waiting for the hamburgers to cook is to let your red wine breathe. I love pairing an everyday red or a table red with my hamburgers, so let's do that. Mmm, this wine smells good. So I'm just gonna set that aside and let it breathe. And then when we're ready to eat, that will be ready to drink. All right, so my hamburgers look like they're ready to flip. That's good. Woohoo! Yes, they are. Now, I like my medium rare. So now what I'm gonna do is add the cheese. Woo! That was nice. Turn it down a little bit. Put a lot of cheese. And the reason I put the cheese on right away is because if I wait later, and I will have to put a lid on, if you want to wait, you absolutely can. This will give the cheese time to cook because the hamburger still has quite a ways to go. It has about four more minutes probably until it's medium rare and cooked on both sides. But what I'd like to do is let them rest. I'm gonna take them out. And they're gonna keep cooking. All right, now it's time to put the buns in the oven to broil for two to three minutes. It's the perfect kind of similar time because you're going to let this rest for about five minutes and you're going to put those in for two to three 
and by the time they're perfectly done, everything will be ready to go. So let's put the buns in the oven. Okay, so our buns are done. Our meat is resting. It could probably rest for two more minutes. Whoops. That was for my buns. Um, but this could probably rest for two or three more minutes. But while we're waiting, we can prep the buns. Let's do that. Now, what we're gonna do first is put the parsley, garlic, shallot, and butter spread on. Now, some people might want it on both sides, bottom and the top. It's really up to you. I'm just gonna put mine on the bottom because I have the cheese on the top. So we're gonna just get that. It's all room temperature, so it should spread very nicely. And remember, the butter in the spread is gonna spread nicely, but then you have butter in the brioche. I mean, and this is, if this isn't cumberbutt, I don't know what it is. This is so good. Okay, so there we go for that. Now, we're gonna wait for the burger. The burger's about ready, but let's pour ourselves a glass of wine. Just see how it tastes. Mm. I love pairing food with wine. I don't usually drink wine without food. So I had the opportunity to live near Walla Walla, Washington for quite a few years when I was a young adult and, and an adult. And I just started to go to the tastings with friends and family, but then also um, on my own when I was just going to go pick up a, a bottle of wine, they would have their tasting rooms. And I just started to learn more and more about wine. Now I do not call myself anywhere close to an expert, but I definitely started to notice there was a difference in qualities of wine. And expensive wines aren't necessarily better, but there are some labels that are worth seeking out for those special occasions. Um, a great bottle of red wine does not have to cost you more than $20. If you have someone in your wine shop that you trust, have them recommend one to you. Um, but really, when you pair, the flavors and the food come alive even more, and the wine comes alive even more. And I love that. Um, I am not someone who thinks that you can't put it in the fridge and not drink it. Um, you can, and I do, because I'm not gonna drink a whole bottle. I'm not gonna even drink half a bottle. I'll have a nice glass of wine with my hamburger, and I'll put that in the refrigerator, and if it's a good wine, it'll still taste good the next day. What I'll do with the red is take it out 20 to 30 minutes before I plan to enjoy it. That way it reaches room temperature, and I'll enjoy it again. It won't be at the peak of what it was when you opened it initially, but it won't be bad. Don't listen to those people who say that, that it will because it's not true and it saves you a ton of money and it also enables you to enjoy wine for complimenting food because that's what it's all about. Okay, so the hamburgers are done and we've let them rest a little bit. Perfect. Now, spatula. And I like letting them rest because some of those excessive juices come out and they don't come and, and, and soggy the bun. So we're gonna put it right on top. Perfect. Now the relish. Mm, yum. As much, as little as you want. And it, what I love about the relish is that it's warm just like the burgers. Everything's room temperature, I mean uh, warm. The only thing that's a little cool is the spread on the bottom. And that is the burger. Voila. And I will usually pair this, I'll usually pair this with either roasted broccoli or if you want your fries, I love sweet potato fries. Go get yourself a sweet potato, slice it up into diced pieces or to long fries, put olive oil, salt and pepper, roast it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes on 375 degrees. And it's just a wonderful pairing here. Um, but let's take a bite. Mmm. Oh. is medium to medium rare. The juiciness of the cheese and then the spread within the relish. And then you have the brioche bun. It's all just works so well together. Pair with a glass of wine and you have yourself 
a lovely meal in about 30 minutes. So enjoy your day, enjoy your food, and enjoy stepping into your kitchen. It's by Clemency Burton Hill, and it gives you um, a historic, historical um, piece of information about a particular um, composition every single day of the year. It is approachable, it is helpful, and I have learned so much more about classical music and learned to appreciate it. She's fun, she's lighthearted, she doesn't take herself too seriously, but at the same time, she also knows her music. So for example, I learned a lot about Fanny Mendelssohn, and on February 2nd, um, she writes, When Fanny Mendelssohn was 14, she memorized J.S. Bach's 48 preludes and played them to her father for his birthday. Mr. Mendelssohn was apparently impressed, charmed even by this astonishing feat of memory and technical prowess, but his response to this sens sensationally gifted daughter can essentially be summed up as, Very nice, dear, but leave music making to the boys. Because Felix Mendelssohn, if you remember from history, with the exception of some fierce pioneers, the history of women in classical music is pretty much this. Right up until the late 20th century, talented human is compelled to express herself through music, but is repressed by a patriarchy that forbids her from composing except behind closed doors. What's so infuriating is that Fanny was in a supposedly supportive environment. Felix was well aware of his sister's genius. They shared every piece they wrote, and he adored her. Yet he even prevented her from publishing her work. Presumably, he was trying to be helpful when he put out lots under his name, or simply F. Mendelssohn, meaning that music, which for years was attributed to Felix, is only now being revealed as Fanny's. Even Queen Victoria, when asked which of Felix's pieces she liked best, named a song by Fanny. And she'll talk about the composer. She'll talk about the people, the history, what's going on, what the context was, what the exigence was, what inspired them to create it, why they created it. And you feel so much more of a connection to each of the songs. But she's just as lighthearted. So for example, on January 16th, she writes about um, Alexander Skarabin's um, Etude in C sharp minor, and I probably mispronounced that, my apologies. Option two, number one, she simply writes, look, sometimes what we really need in the middle of January is music that feels like a large glass of red wine. You're welcome. So, year of wonder. I've got a glass of wine here. I'm gonna go enjoy my hamburger. Hope you find many everyday luxuries to savor, whether it be food, a good book, or a lovely glass of wine paired with your book. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>